So in this video, I want to actually create a texture for my magic bullet. So previously I just used like a basic texture that we had somewhere in Unity, but now I want to have a good looking texture. So here in my scene, I have like this basic projectile we made previously. And I want to now have like a texture that looks something like this or with some more detail like this. So we see like uh, these particle details, which can be nice. So there are multiple ways of creating this. So you can use whatever software you're familiar with, but I actually want to use Houdini to create this and I'm gonna do a little particle simulation for this. Let's jump into Houdini for this. I'm gonna start out with a grid and from this grid now, I will actually spawn particles. So this grid will be an emitter and we have particles flying up from here. So I don't need like the whole area. So we can just reduce, uh, for example, this to let's say 1.5 or 3 or something like that, just like a, a, a finer stroke. Then we're going to use the pop network, which is used for particles. So we can just use my grid in the first input. And you can already see we have particles or points created here. So when I open the timeline and press play, we can already see a lot of these points are getting spawned. So now to understand this a bit more, let's go inside the pop network. So inside the pop network, we have a basic setup for particles. So what's important here to know is, for example, this here. So this is the input from the pop. So here will be actually a reference to my grid. And right now, it's the emission type is saying scattering on the surface. So whatever geometry I use as input, we will scatter points on this. We can also go here to BERT. And this is then the amount of spawns. So if I would lower this, if I would say 20, we will have like way less particles as you could see as before. So let's keep that to 5,000 for now. So we have like a lot of these particles. And then next up, I want these particles to be flying upwards. So there are multiple ways of doing that. And I'm going to use actually a pop fob. So we can use the pop fob here plug that in and if you're familiar with fobs uh, this should be quite familiar here this menu so what I will do is I will just use a noise so we just can use for example the static noise here you can just place it here you can use position and plug that in over here then or noise I only actually want the noise in the y direction so in the up axis here so let's use the float to a vector so float vector and only in the y axis i would like to have this uh, noise so i'm going to plug this in v of velocity so normally if i press play now we can see we have these particles so they now go upwards so again, if I would have put this in all channels, so if you will now see that we will have the noise in more directions. So in the noise, we have a lot of interesting settings. I can, I can recommend you checking out these noises. So these noises are used quite consistently overall in Houdini. So they are also used for like deforming geometry or other things. They're quite interesting to know. And in this case, I'm going to go with the the warning noise here and let's press play and you can see that we have like a more different type of noise here we can also play around with the frequency so maybe what if we like lower this to 0.5 i think that's a bit better our shapes are a bit bigger and what we can do as well is let's say i want this to be more intense we can just plug in a multiplier so multiply by constant value and you can for example multiply this by two and this will now be two times as sort of like stronger so it will go two times higher up so if i view the last frame here so now we have a basic setup here and we can still improve on this by for example uh, adding a pop fluid so this will sort of like add some fluid behavior to the points we have so we can just plug that in over here and we'll re-simulate 
and you will see that they are now more like fluid like so you can see that they sort of like cluster a bit closer to each other into this fluid shape and you can see that this gives a quite interesting shape here that I can use for example for that for that particle what we can also do now is we can decide to do a, a pop color so I want to color the particles a bit so pop color and in there we can uh, in there we can use a ramp for example and you can see that the color is not really affecting here that much so if i play around with this ramp i don't see that much of a difference and what i often would do is set the range from zero to point one and now we have like the a better range here so we have like a better gradient and that's basically what i'm gonna do so i can still tweak this and play around with this but this is like a really basic introduction to like particles pop network and houdini so now what we can do as well is we can uh, create a camera for example so we can create new camera uh, i'm gonna keep it to camera and we're gonna use actually a orthographic so make sure it's set to orthographic and not perspective and i want to align my camera a bit better and also know that I want to have a square, so I'm going to set the resolution of the camera to be like a game square texture. And now we can then have this. We also see that we can still see my projectile, so we can just hide this away. Then for zooming, I actually want to go here to orthographic width, and I'm going to set this to 10. And I'm going to just tweak it like so. So we have a perfect frame around this and i'm just gonna then like uh, you can render this out or just like grab a screenshot that i'll show you that in a minute but what we can do as well is we can always do a sphere and use a copy to points copy the sphere on the points and you can have something like this so let's maybe disable the lights and make this smaller i can have something like this so I can prove it more by making a remapping. So remap attribute. And I'm going to use a value called h. And I want to uh, rename the value h to a p skill. So this will use so this will be used in a skill. You can actually see here on the bottom that it starts to scale these pieces. So in here we're gonna now compute the range. And our h is from minimum value this is 0 0.1 so and we have the maximum value of 9.3 so we want to change this now to let's just put 0 in here and to like for example 0.1 maybe 4 so we have like the small particles here but actually we want to reverse this and we can reverse this easily here in the ramp and we can click this button to reverse that so we now have like the big chunks here and we have like the small parts here. So that's great to see. We can also reverse actually the color ramp here as well. Uh, I think that's better. So we have like the smaller dots are darker. Now to actually sort of like render or save this out, we can use here a flipbook render. And I'm also going to change my background color to black. So I'm going to press D in my viewport. I'm going to go to backgrounds, change my color scheme to dark. And now I have this black color here. And now we can see that like, we have like this better blending here. So now let's create a flipbook so we can create a new flipbook. And I only want this frame and we can just here use current frame. Or we can turn, for example, to five if you want to be really sure it's this frame. Then also make sure we are rendering out a beauty pass. The reason why we need the beauty pass is otherwise the UI elements will also be uh, captured as well. Then we're going to go to effects. We can set this to like some high quality uh, anti aliasing We can also set the resolution. So maybe let's go to 1K. And when you're happy with this, we can just start rendering out. So normally this M play menu will show up and we have a nice uh, sort of like screenshot or render from this. So we have some nice detail of this particle. 
Then further here, we can just use the uh, save frame option to output this. And we have now this as a texture. And here's just like, give it a name like magic flame and I just want a PNG and that's it, so save. Then in Unity, we can make a new folder for textures. So textures, and I can now import this as well. Uh, one more thing, I quickly like flip the texture upside down because it will work better with my UVs. And also here, I'm going to enable uh, alpha is trans my transparency. So we automatically from Houdini get like this uh, transparency or alpha map. Then for the material, I'm going to right click create material. Let's call this flame, flames. Like you can, you can create an advanced material, but I'm going to just use uh, some materials we already are built in Unity. Let's go to mobile. And in here we have particles and I'm going to use the additive particle. Then we have an option to input a texture and this will then be the flames uh, that I just created some magic flames. So if I now drag this on here, we now have, as you could see, this magic flames. So the exact same particle. Now what I currently see is that my 3D mesh is, I would like to change the UVs a bit. So we can always go back into Houdini. So here we can go back to my sphere. And in here we can now use our quick shade and preview that material. So we can grab it here. So as you can see, we have like a basic preview. So what I want to do is so I see that my cylindrical unwrap is not aligned anymore, just, just because I later on did some tweaking, uh, my UV is not automatically uh, recalculated. So I'm just going to press initialize. And that normally should give me a better effect. We can always like tweak this bit more manually. Like if I want to, like, as you could see, like stretch this out, like really far, like so. We can even create like more cooler effects, uh, but I'm just going to keep it to the default, like so. Maybe a bit, maybe a bit like this. Then also, I don't like here the tiling. I think it's too much. What we can do is go to this transform. Uh, we can switch to UV view, and we can play around here with this uh, scale. So I know that this is this value. So if I play around with that, we can tweak this. So I'm going to have to set this lower. So maybe let's try 0.2. Maybe this is, that's a bit too low, maybe three or four. I think that's good enough. So the only thing we have to do now is go here, save output, and that's it. As you can see, now I have like more or property thing here on the boot. So it will look better. So that was it for this video. I created this texture in Houdini. Again, there are multiple ways of creating this texture or approaching this, but I wanted to show you this in Houdini with some particle system as well to create some more, again, procedural ways where I can generate a lot of these variations if I want to. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.